Welcome. I think you're going to really like this one. Um, one of the things that I think teachers struggle with is uh, the number of students that we have uh, with IEPs and 504s and other accommodations. And it's very difficult sometimes to keep track of these students um, and all the different needs that they come with, uh, particularly when you have, uh, we'll call it an inclusion class, where 50% or more of your students um, have some need that needs to be uh, addressed and met. So um, what I have for this video is a nice sort of interactive spreadsheet that I use daily to keep track of uh, all the different accommodations and modifications that my students need. And uh, once it's set up, we can save it as a template and then reuse it for all of the classes. So it's very handy. So you're going to want to open up uh, a Google Sheets, a blank one. I'm going to name this one right away so we don't forget. We'll call this IEP grid and you can call it template if you'd like or you can just leave it as IEP grid because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually save this one down here I'm going to rename it right away as template okay so I'm going to skip a line and I'm going to write in for this one I'm just going to type in accommodations for and for me block works best We'll do capital for this. And then I'll leave this one blank over here. Um, but for this one, I want to bold it. And then I'm going to skip over and I'm just going to write class just in case it's, um, we can use it for any class that we want. Uh, and what, I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge a couple of these together. I'm going to make it to the right so it will fit up with this one uh, and then what we can do is we can actually underline it by just choosing the lower border so then when it prints out you can actually see what that line is we'll do the same thing over here um, we're gonna merge these cells together and then I'm just gonna put an underlined border on that one as well so now we can put uh, either type the class in or we can write handwrite it if you if we decide to do that as well uh, I'm going to skip a line. Underneath, I'm going to type in student. Uh, and then what I'm going to do for the rest of these cells is I'm going to type in what the different accommodations that I've found have been pretty common. Um, so I'm going to type in type for this one. You'll see why in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to do pref seating. This one I'm going to do extra time. Over here I'm going to do home textbook. Uh, repeat directions. Helps if I spell it right. Uh, study guides. Copy of notes. What do we get next? Reduce to work. I bet these sound familiar. Modified tests. Tests in small groups. Uh, word banks. And then this one, I kind of grouped this one together for uh, queuing and check-ins. I find that sometimes these come up um, together. Chunking, that's a good buzzword. Uh, frequent breaks, he doesn't need a break every now and then. Frequent. And then the last one I'm just going to type in other. Okay, so we have this really long list that's here. I'm going to sort of shorten it up just a little bit. Uh, the way we're going to do that um, is we're going to just change the width of each of these cells. So for this cell here, I'm going to highlight the whole cell. I'll double click or right click on it and I'm going to resize it. Uh, this one I'm going to make to 45. I find that works pretty good. Um, and then the rest of these, I'm going, let's well actually this one I need to make 65. I find that one works pretty well. And then the rest of them, we'll just highlight all of them except for the last one. So all the way to frequent breaks. 
we'll right click this and we're going to resize these columns to uh, 62. Uh, this last one for other because it's a little bit bigger we'll resize this one to 250 and then the first one because we got to put their names in it we're going to resize this one to 155 okay so it doesn't look uh, super great right now because they're all kind of squished together uh, but what we can do is we can take this cell right here and I can we can grab it to sort of make it so it's twice the the thickness twice the there we go and then we can see most of those cells that are right there uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that everything is kind of nice in the middle so we can highlight this whole thing and what we can do is we can center it and we can put it in the middle and we can also wrap the text there we go uh, and so this one's a little bit off, so that's no big deal. We can just drag it over just a little bit so we get all the words. And we can, uh, this one doesn't work so well here, but what you can do is you can split the word. Let's try that again with our space bar. And we get word banks. Uh, so the rest of them look pretty good. Um, the other thing that I would like to do, just so it stands out when we print it up, I'm going to highlight all of these. And I'm going to use the fill and we'll do like a light gray. There we go. Uh, we lost our accommodations over here. So what we can do too is we can highlight those and we can merge it. So now we have accommodations for the block. Okay. We have our basic outline for um, what this is going to look like. Um, because this is going to be a spreadsheet, we can also just grab some of these cells and we can put a border all around it and we essentially have a nice table now this would be good enough uh, but we want to make it a little bit more interactive and this is the part that I think you're gonna like a lot because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some uh, pull down menus for each of these which makes it super easy very convenient um, and it's actually not that difficult to do. It's pretty pretty easy, and then you can do is copy and paste, and you'll see how quickly you can go through it. Uh, so let's do a couple of these. So we'll start with the with the type, the, the type of um, accommodation or a modification. So for this first one here, I'm just going to uh, right click on it, and then when I scroll down, I'm going to go to data validation. When we get this uh, screen over here. We have a couple of options. It says list from a range. We don't want that. We want a list of items, and then we're going to type in the items that we want to be on our pull down menu. So if we choose this one, we can type in right here exactly what we want, and then just like it says, separate it by a comma. So here's how we do this. So I'm going to type in IEP, comma, 504, comma, uh, an English language learner that comes up quite a bit uh, and another one is uh, formerly limited English proficient student so flip uh, you can put whatever you want in there right um, this is just an example that I'm showing you and then all we do is hit save and if you notice we have this little triangle that appears over here uh, that's our pull-down menu and so if we click on that triangle we have our list right here so we don't have to type it in, we just choose from that list, which is really, really handy. Now, I've only made a short uh, table that's right here, but if we want this list for the pull-down menu for all of these cells, we just highlight that cell, we grab this little end of the square, and we just drag it down. Perfect, look at that. Now, each one of these has the same pull-down menu. And so if I wanted to select IEP, let's go to the top one. Remember we had um, poor George. I like I spelled his name wrong. So George Washington was our student. If he has, if he has a, an IEP, we can just select it and it shows up. We don't have to type it in anymore. Uh, if, we want a, if he had a 504, it rewrites it. Um, if you didn't want that, you can just click on it and literally hit delete. It goes away, but the pull-down menu is still there. So it works so nicely. And notice how it says all changes are saved. So we don't have to ever worry about that. 
Uh, let's do another one and then I'll show you um, the different um, accommodations that I've found are, are usually really handy that come up all, all the time. Preferential seating. Everyone needs preferential seating these days. So remember what we'll do is we'll right click or double click depending on what you have. Data validation. And then where it says for the criteria we want list of items. Okay, so what I've found is pretty handy for uh, preferential seating is near the front. Uh, sometimes you get students that need it for the back for whatever reason, but uh, it works better for them. Other times I've found that being close to the teacher is an accommodation. Uh, another one is uh, distractions or away from distractions. Every now and then you'll get something that doesn't really fit the norm uh, or something that usually is just a little bit unique. Uh, so what you can do for these is you can actually type in other and then what I do is I just put a little hyphen there and I put uh, type directly into this cell. So what does that mean? Well let's save it and then we'll see. So for this one again a preferential seating We've got choose the front, back, teacher, or from distractions. Maybe George needs to be in the front for whatever reason. But you don't have to choose this one for type other. Uh, let's say that the student for some reason, let me just delete this one, needs to be near a window. Uh, you can just click on this and you can literally type in window and it stays. Now you do get a little notice that it's invalid. It says, you know, must put a specified list, but you know what? You don't actually have to do that because all we're going to do is we're going to print this, right? If I wanted to print it and I would go up with my print menu, we don't want the grid lines. Um, and we're going to do the whole sheet. If we just hit OK, print and it comes up, if we zoom in over here, it reads window. Can you see that? So even though uh, Google Sheets doesn't like the fact that we put something that's not in their list, it doesn't matter because we're smarter than Google Sheets and we're just using this tool as a nice easy way uh, to keep track of the accommodations for our students. Uh, and again, if you don't want it, you just click on it. Yep, I know it's invalid, thank you. Delete it and that little window goes away. And so we want all this for all of our other cells. So we'll just click on that cell and we'll just drag it all the way down. And now each one of these has now been populated with each of those choices for the pull-down menu. It's fantastic. It takes like no time at all to do this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, I'm not gonna, you don't have to watch me type in each one of these. That would be really exciting, I know. Um, but I'm gonna uh, put up a list of the different accommodations that I've found that have been helpful and very frequently used for my um, IEPs that, and 504s that I have. Uh, so take a look at that list and then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so now that we've got our whole uh, spreadsheet populated with those uh, pull down menus, you can see we got them all there. If, if it seems like it gets stuck, like it doesn't work, just type, uh, click where there isn't um, a pull down menu and then you can get to see those again. Uh, this is our template. So we're gonna get rid of George, by George. So we're gonna, we don't need him anymore. Um, so as long as this is our template, what we wanna do is we can use uh, this to, to form our other classes. So down here, I'm just gonna click on this. I'm just going to uh, duplicate it. And we basically have a, a copy of the whole thing. Um, I like to move my template to the end. But if we click on the template, what we can do is we can just uh, rename it. So you can put whatever class name that you want. Uh, for me, um, we have block, so I'll just put this is for block one. So you might have a group of students uh, that have accommodations. So we can just copy them in. Now, if you notice, I copied it from another list. Uh, one of the things that, and it's just minors, you may just have to reformat by adding those borders back in. So, uh, perfect. And what you can do is you can just go across. So maybe, you know, George, he's got an IEP and uh, she has a 504. Uh, and let's see, maybe we've got uh, an IEP over here. Uh, Einstein, yeah, you know, he 
had some issues, I think, probably. Um, Isaac Newton probably has an IEP. You know what? He's kind of a 504 four type of guy. Uh, Jane Goodall, she talks with the apes, so she's probably like an ELL. I don't know. And you get the idea. So now you can just go through this and you can pick. Um, clearly, this person needs to be from distractions. Um, Al likes to be in the front. You get the idea, right? You can just pick whichever ones that you need. Um, wants a copy of notes. Uh, George, bad back, maybe, so needs this. It, you, you understand how this works. Modified tests, yep, yeah, for, uh, for length, too long. Uh, the other nice thing that you can do about this once you have all these, and of course you can type in where we have the other, if there's something that's just unique that doesn't fit into these, you can type that in over here. Uh, but the other thing that you can do is you can right click or double click on this and what you can do is you can insert uh, a comment and then you'll have a nice little piece that comes up. Uh, so why is that kind of handy? Because you might be able to put uh, case manager is uh, Jane Doe, something like that. And then when you hit the comment, if you hover over it, it has uh, the comment that was that was made by that other person. Uh, Jane, let's see, we could put in a comment here, likes to monkey around, something like that. So just watch out. The other really handy thing um, about this and, and, and about using uh, the Google Sheets and, and really any of the Google uh, apps in the suite is this ability to share over here. If you have an instructional assistant or it's a team taught class um, or you have someone else that um, you need to share this information with, it's literally as simple as clicking on share and you type in the person's email address. They then have access to the same document. And so you can work with another person on that same document. It, it, it's uh, very, very handy. Um, the other thing, look, I mean, you can keep it completely electronic if you want to, uh, or you can print it. Uh, we went through the, the uh, different settings before, the different options. And if you take a look, it fits in, right? We'll zoom in just a little bit here so you can take a look. Uh, but those different uh, settings, they all fit in. And so you can see um, all the different accommodations for each of our students. Uh, it works out really nicely. Um, we, we did notice that it kind of flips around a little bit. That's no big deal either, right? Um, we can just go through all these and we can just make sure that everything is centered. And then when you see that print again, the print preview, everything is nice and lined up right in the middle. Uh, and it fits perfectly, which is, which is really nice. Um, the other thing you can do too, I mean, uh, you can go crazy with that data validation, right? Accommodations for the block or the class. Um, if you wanted to, again, you could put in uh, data validation here and you can put in a number, like if you had blocks uh, one through five or something like that for your day. Um, if you have different classes that you teach, uh, maybe you teach an English class, history, I teach science, so I could put physics or physical science. And again, you just have the pull down menus. It just makes it a lot quicker, especially with all of the, the wonderful extra things that uh, we're asked to do these days. So I hope that you found that uh, helpful and uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.